so what does the saying god guru and self are one mean also what is the higher self what do people talk about when they say that so from my own experience I've come to see that time is an illusion. Time is something that is perceptory. It's something that we perceive with our senses. And without senses, uh, there is no time. So evolution also is an illusion too, in a way. And the fact that there never was anything to evolve or not to, or to not evolve. There was a, how do I describe that? The consciousness was always present. It was always there. It was always evolved. It was always timeless. But it took a form of time in order to be able to organize an experience, it seems. Now, I'll try my best to only speak from experience or as close to that as I can because I know that it's easy to be able to uh, pontificate about these things. But there is some truth to all these things and there are things that I've experienced in myself that helped me to realize what the higher self is, what the God Guru self is. So going a little more into that I'll start with God guru self so God guru self so everybody knows the word God or pretty much everybody does it's referring to an infinite consciousness or an infinite presence awareness bliss Satchitananda just perfect presence purely blissful presence then you have guru, which is the connection between the self and God. It is the, uh, I guess you could call it like a bridge maker in a way. It's the, uh, it's the, the being that ushers the soul from one side to another. Ushers the soul, meaning it helps to initiate evolution towards realization of the ever-perfect consciousness that already is in presence inside of the self. They're known as the darkness dispeller, or guru, guru, darkness dispeller, or the one who dissipates darkness, or the one who brings light. And so the one who brings light is known as the guru. And what that means is that they shed light onto your own soul. They show you yourself. They don't show you anything outside of yourself. They literally direct you into your own self. And then they show you inside your own self how you are the source of everything. That you that I speak of, though, is not the ego. It is where we go self, God, guru, self. So guru is that, that you that I'm speaking of. That's the closest thing that you could call to that you, where there's still some sort of an ego and a body in order for there to be a dualistic experience. But at the same time, uh, there's the least amount of identification with the body-mind and the most identification with the infinite consciousness of everything. Self is the little expression and the big expression of the atma or the uh individualized soul it's like, but it's the uh individualized soul so it's the it's that spark of infinity that that spark off the anvil of infinity or the um the ray of light that comes from the sun the light itself, while it exists, is still one with the sun because it, it came from the sun and it still has the same qualities as the sun. It has heat and light. Now, not to the same power level, 
because obviously it's individualized. So there's only a certain amount of energy that can be given to a particular individual form because in that nature, in order for that form to exist, some other form has to contrast it. And so what that means is that the form that is made for us to experience is actually just a contrast to the formless consciousness that is where we come from. And that leads you to ask the question of what is life in general or what is experience? Like, what is it that we are doing here? Why are we here? How did we get here? Where did we come from? You know, what are we doing here? What is life? You know, like all these questions, they come up in the way of like, once you come to see that it's almost like we were just, we just appeared, you know, it's like we just got implanted here and then we were given some story to play and we just took on the role and we just started, we just took it on, <laughs> you know, we just went into it and we, we started to um, really, really deeply identify with the role. You know, it's like a method actor or something like that where they, they get really super into their role until they're done playing it. And then they just go back to being the actor that they were in the first place. But for the whole time that they're doing the role, they are completely enveloped in that. And that's like most people in this world. Now, going back to God Guru self and to higher self. So higher self is, it's like the guru of you, but it's like the guru of you that's already as highly evolved as possible. So it's, it's like, it's like that, that portion of you, that portion of you, which is the spark of infinity on its way back to infinity as close to the infinity that it can be without being completely merged into it. So it's an infinite consciousness and it's experiencing itself expanding infinitely. But at the same time, it knows that it's a portion of almost like a larger infinity and that each individualized portion of infinity is infinity on its own self and then combined together, I guess you could call it like the Maha infinity or something. It'd be like the, the great infinity or the, you know, the, 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 the ultimate reality, if you want to put it that way. So it's like, it's almost like everything is fractalized and it goes infinitely downward and it goes infinitely upward in the way of infinite uh, contraction and infinite expansion. And I'm sure as a soul, we experience pretty much all of that because there is no time. And since there's no time, there's plenty of time. <laughs> if that makes any sense. There's so, there's, so, there's so much time that there is no time. And timelessness is such an interesting thing because there could be an excess of time that is perceived. But once the consciousness is led back to the timeless state, it's pretty much as if it never left and it's been there the whole time. So it's like a dream, you know, like when you go to sleep, you have all these dreams when you're sleeping, you see all these scenes, experiences, memories maybe, and then you wake up and 30 minutes later, it's almost as if it never happened. This life is like that in a way, but it's just a little bit more, uh, detailed, you know, more consistent. So our higher self is the one who understands these things and sees it in the, in the state of it's literally the higher self is the one who is in infinite amounts of incarnations happening all at the same time. It's literally doing infinite amounts of things at infinite amounts of levels of consciousness meaning there's parts of it that are in the lowest astral planes and there's parts of it that are in the highest astral planes. There's parts of it that are completely enveloped in the causal realm. And there's a single part of it, which is absolutely connected with infinity of God. And that single part is almost like an umbilical cord, if you want to put it that way. It's like the thing that 
like like it's like the thing that god sends itself through in a way it's hard to describe that but like it's almost like like you have the higher self and you have god and the only thing that separates the two of them is the idea that the higher self could be more or that that, that the infinity is ever expanding so it's just like the understanding that even though you are infinite and you're ever expanding you're also a portion of a larger infinity basically which is which is known as god so you have the atman and then you have the paramatman so the higher self is like the atman and then the paramatman is like the higher self of the higher self if you want to put it that way it's like god literally it's like the the ishta if you want to put it that way it's the ishta um it's the one that you merge into once you are fully liberated the one that you uh, become one with. That higher self merges into through the umbilical cord. If I know that's that's not the right word for it, but it's basically like through through the energetic connection. It's more like a Bluetooth connection, kind of, because it's not physical. But like through the energetic connection between the soul and God, the soul realizes its oneness with God and then merges back into it and then collapses and expands infinitely and basically what seems to be goes into a timeless experience of an inf infinite growth in a way of uh, a never-ending bliss a never-ending ever-expanding bliss until the soul decides to incarnate into a human body again and it does that just because, uh, I don't know, it just has desires, I guess, you know? I find it so interesting, too, is that how, how people can go into a state of nervi kalpa samadhi and still decide to take a body back again. Or how avatars can come back thousands and thousands and thousands of times and be liberated the whole time, but also take on a personality complex. It's definitely very interesting to me. And it makes you wonder about your own self, too. Like... How deeply does your, you know, <laughs> where is your higher self located? Like, what is it that, who, who's your ishto? Like, what is it that is in, who's your guru? Who's your, um, it's like, the point that I'm making is that it, it, it leads you into introspection about your own connections with the universe and your own higher self. And then when you come into realization of like some of these realities, it's almost like, there's this like aha moment where you're like, oh, like I see that there's other, like there's beings that have been sitting here, like being with me the whole time. And on one level, those beings were actually me, but just the higher form of me, you know? And so it's interesting how the one higher form or how one highest form can take forms of infinite infinities. And those infinite infinities can take form as other infinite infinities in the form of gurus and things. I don't know, it's just very interesting to me. But for the past, I'd say two minutes, I've gone off into a twilight zone, it seems. Not bad per se, but it's just not 100% based off of personal experience. It's more based off of like an understanding that I just can feel in myself, you know? But what I have realized though is that the higher self is connected with you always, all the time. It's timeless and formless. And it is um, infinite, ever-expanding, ever-conscious, ever-new bliss. And God is just all of the higher selves of all beings in existence merged together into a super being, basically, which is absolutely formless from the understanding, you know. But from what I've actually experienced in my life, it's like, I just know that God is bliss. <laughs> I know that God is ever-existing bliss, ever-conscious bliss, perfect bliss. And I know that because I just experienced that. So, like, I say sometimes, but it's, it's been very often lately. There's some days where literally you're sitting there just crying at how beautiful everything is for hours out of the day, you know? Or you'll see people and you'll start crying and you just like have all these blissful experiences. You see these things, you know, like the deer over here. 
beautiful. Say hi. Hello. Okay. Ciao. Thank you.